actually the so the play spawned this thought to me that had been bouncing around in my head during the game that had nothing to do with Steph Curry's defense and everything to do with Steph Curry's offense. And that is this idea of mobility and agility and speed and horizontal coverage and north to south coverage in in transition. We'll talk about that. Being so critical to survive defensively. And then the teams that are thriving defensively, it seems, aren't exposed in this speed mobility kind of dimension that I'm talking about. They can they can cover the three-point line, they can get back in transition, and they're thriving with their size and their paint protection. And Cody, we're going to hit your bingo card right out of the gate today. Rim protection, right? And so that was the team on the other side of the court, the Milwaukee Bucks, who played this defensive game against the Warriors. I think you texted me that it was 4-4 with six minutes left in the first quarter, and you were having a 2004 party at your house. You got some baggy jeans out and some square shoes, and you were very excited about everything going on. Um, But they didn't even have Giannis in this game. Brooke Lopez, I want to talk about him today. He's huge. He is a great drop center. He protects the rim incredibly well. I wouldn't call him the greatest shot blocker in the history of Earth, but just elite in all of these areas. And after this back surgery or whatever happened to him last year, I think he's moving better than he's ever moved in his life. His hips, I don't know if he's been in yoga, if he's if they have some progressive uh, uh, medical staff in Milwaukee. Maybe, Cody, you can give us some inside information. His hips look amazing. This ability to be this big and backpedal and turn and swivel and change directions. Even last night, he had a couple plays where... He's guarding in one direction, picking up one man. The The ball goes to his man. He goes to contest. Doesn't really bite too hard. The pass is to the other side of the basket, turns around, blocks the shot or alters it. Um, that's, that's like Tim Duncan stuff. That's just, it's fantastic. So this is the big thought in my head. Like, can you defend in this league going into the playoffs? What is it going to look like if you don't have speed and mobility? And... Are there teams like Milwaukee out there, we can start with them, who are going to be elite and win in the playoffs because of their defense, because they have this size, because they have this length, because they have this paint presence and vertical presence, shot blocking, but they don't they don't get gutted with speed. That's the big thought. That's a huge thought, Ben, that we'll get to in a second, because I want to sit on Brooke Lopez for a second. I he's, lo- he's really big. He weighs a lot, so he can take it. The Tim Duncan comparison, I was actually thinking that, while you were bringing it up, like right before you said it, I'm like, the way that he defends the rim reminds me of Tim Duncan because they more or less, they sort of have the same build, except Brook Lopez is a couple inches taller and like maybe 20 pounds heavier, maybe even more like Brook Lopez. Like I was even commenting on it last night to my wife. I'm like, you see that guy? He's massive. He makes everyone on the court like Kevon Looney is standing next to him. I think Kevon Looney is like 6'10", probably like 250. Looks like a child next to him. And, you know, I don't watch every single quarter of every game. Like, believe it or not, Ben, but I just don't have I, – I haven't done that. But I would be surprised if there were many quarters of defensive play better than Brook Lopez's first quarter last night against the Warriors. Because the way, like you said, that he was protecting the rim, right, the way that he was positioning himself, the way that he was blocking shots, it was it was unbelievable to me. And it's not the only reason that the Warriors only scored four points in the first five, five and a half minutes or so, but it was definitely a really big part of it because he was saving easy baskets. He was saving layups and just... And the mobility thing, I think the thing that's really changed over the years with Brook that's really impressed me I think earlier in his Bucks tenure, when when the Bucks were always running this really deep drop, it was like a big part of their defense. He would be back in like the charge circle, like literally he'd be in the charge circle when the pick and roll would come and he'd be dropping back that far. He's been like adjusting the height of that exactly. drop a lot better. And he's yep. able to do, do like, I think what you've dubbed a high drop before where he drops, but he's still containing the ball handler and he's long enough and big enough that he can contest a jump shot if someone decides to pull up there. So I think that's a big element of how Brook Lopez's defense has changed as a buck. It might have been at the end of the game in that run or in the first quarter. I can't remember. I, I don't think I watched all four quarters. Um, so maybe it was in the first half now that I think about it. There was a play where Curry hits a pull-up three coming around a screen and pick and roll. And Brook Lopez was in his drop, essentially. But what stood out to me is that he almost tapped Curry's wrist on the follow-through. 
that's how high he was up. You know, he wasn't at the level of the screen, that term we use to describe the defender basically being at the same height and position on the court as the screener. But he's far enough out now and he's he's comfortable coming out that he like almost blocked a Steph Curry pull up three coming around a pick and roll. And there were other possessions in that game just to stick with last night where Brooke was about 30 feet out when they moved the screen way out near half court. He's like, I will come way out and then I will contain as I need to. Um, and of course, the Bucks. it's well documented in the last few years, going back to the championship season, that they've tried to diversify their coverages a little bit more. And, and so this is what you're talking about. When it started, he was really, really back in the paint. And I remember the 2019 Celtics series getting a sort of an inkling of optimism about the Celtics chances to upset the Bucks in this series because Al Horford plays the pick and pop so much. And Brooke was so deep that it's like, ah, he's really not going to get out to that pick and pop three. And I think in game one, wasn't it game one, there was a Celtics upset. They went back one, one. And I think it ended up being a four, one series. Do you remember off the top of your head? I don't know. So, so one of those games in Milwaukee, there was an upset and it's like, yeah, how are they going to take away this pick and pop three? I think fast forward a couple years to where we are today in 2023. Um, I'm not like literally worried at all about the Bucks playing a team with a stretch big man who wants to take 12 threes in a game. Like Al, we know Al Horford. We saw it last year in the playoffs. Al Horford will hit six or seven threes in a game, but I feel like they're even more equipped this season to be like, yeah, okay, we'll come out and we'll run you off the line and we'll contest you. And a lot of that is Brooke Lopez's mobility. Giannis, of course, is really, let's face it, in today's basketball, he's really basically a center. But he plays the four because he's so mobile and you know he's a huge body, so he gets stuck on screens and he doesn't have the quickest feet on earth. But his ability to cover ground on the court, Chris Middleton is like, what, 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, He's not the fastest guy in the world either, but these guys all move and rotate. And um, now you have conference final specialist Jay Crowder on the team. Drew Holiday is a big guard that can get around. So the Bucks are the most interesting team to talk about to me in this sense because they're giant, but they don't seem to give up too much in terms of speed and mobility. I haven't seen a team yet where I'm watching them and I'm like, oh boy, they are really gutting them because Milwaukee's too slow or because Milwaukee doesn't have the mobility to stretch out to the three-point line and recover. And the Bucks right now, um, they seem like the candidate to me to dominate in the playoffs with their defense the most. And I almost wonder, as a sidebar, if that makes them the favorite. Thanks for listening. You can find the full episode of this Thinking Basketball podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you enjoy podcasts.